This is Foothill Ranch, home not of Blade Runner, but since 1998 of Oakley, one of the most important brands in mountain biking for probably the last 30 years. Now we're going to take a good look around all 600,000 square feet of the place, including the part where millions of pairs of sunglasses are made every year. Oh, and before you say, isn't that Simon from GCN, a cross-country mountain biker? Yes, I am. And I've only found one pair of bar ends in the whole place to show you, and I'm not going to wear Lycra. Not this time, anyway. Oakley's headquarters are based in Southern California, just south of LA. The building itself is 600,000 square feet, most of which is taken up with manufacture. I'm not entirely sure what it's doing here, but this ejector seat from a B-52 bomber is actually remarkably comfortable. And there's four of them right here in the lobby at Oakley along with a load of other cool stuff, given that anyone can actually walk in off the street and come here. There is a shop that you can buy at Oakley's, there's a customer service point, there is Greg Minar taking a starring role, fresh from winning the Peter Maritzburg World Championships in 2013. But the first port of call for us is the museum that's just this way. Right, well this is our first port of call, 1975, and a college dropout named Jim Gennard decided that motocross grips didn't quite cut the muster. Basically, as one of your two points of contact, no one had really put that much thought into them. So what he did was went out and sourced a specific type of rubber that became grippier when wet. He then gave it a catchy name, Unobtainium, and designed a very eye-catching looking grip. So that was the first product. Then the goggles came next. Motocross goggles, which look, like you could use them today, quite frankly. Those are blooming cool. But then, perhaps what we're more familiar with, the eyewear starts just down here. These ones, 1984, the very first sports protection eyewear was launched by Oakley. And these are called the Factory Pilot Eye Shades. Blooming cool, quite frankly. Then, the blades came next, swiftly followed by the razor blades, fully customizable. They reckoned at the time there were 22 million different customization options. And this is kind of where mountain biking comes in, including a particularly famous mountain biker who's carelessly left his bike in the Oakley Museum. My absolute all-time mountain bike hero, John Tomac. And this is one of his bikes. I guess from about 1991, 1992. Carbon fiber tubes, titanium lugs, got Manitou forks on there, Shimano XTR, three chain rings. Ah, oh, those were the days. And look at those bar ends. Ah, oh, look at the bar ends. That takes me right back, that does. Now moving on from John Tomac, there was a really, really important point to those early Oakleys that continues to this day, and that was that they're there to protect your eyes as well as making you look super cool. And this little display here sums it up very neatly. So those bottom lenses, those have been shot at distance of 12 feet with a 12 bore shotgun. And that, that's all that's happened to them, which is more than can be said for the rest of you if they were on your face at the time. Then you go up one, and that is a result of a high velocity impact. So the equivalent of a stone flicking up and hitting you in the face. And we're talking about flicking up fast here. That is over 102 miles per hour. Then this top one with this quite terrifying looking implement is the high impact test. So that 500 gram weight is dropped from a height of over a meter onto a pair of glasses, and that is all that happens. And what it's doing is it's simulating a crash, for example, where you might end up landing head first onto a particularly pointy bit of bike, or maybe even worse, a particularly pointy bit of tree. And if you're wearing your glasses, then your eyes are protected. And so that was the fundamental behind all of the glasses that Jim Gennard and Oakley were designing, was that as well as looking cool, actually they were designed to work. And the fact they were designed to work came before them looking cool. Have you ever wondered where the name Oakley comes from? Well, if you had, here's your answer. 
That is Oakley. Founder Jim Gennard's English setter. Ever wondered why Oakley Mumbos were called Mumbos? Well, that there was Jim Gennard's cat called Mumbo. There we go. Bit of trivia for you. Now, the museum continues back here, not just with the evolution of sunglasses and protection, but also with the aesthetic as well. Now, in here, we've got the X-Metal series, which came out in the late 90s with cast titanium frames. Super cool. Then, if we keep going further on, we've also got other products as well that start to appear, like the apparel, the shoes, the watches, and now, Another new development, or at least the last three years, which is helmets. And for mountain biking, a new, new development, because we learned of their Dirt 5 helmet that was actually announced just a few months ago and is being officially launched very soon indeed. This is a particularly important part in Oakley's history with mountain biking because this, the aforementioned Dirt 5, is their first mountain bike helmet. And Greg Minar here, not just a pretty face, as a long-time Oakley ambassador, has actually been consulting with them on the creation of this helmet. We've been teased with it before, but now it's ready for release. We're gonna go and have a quick chat with a couple of designers. Daniel, you're the design lead here, so you can actually tell us why the helmet looks like it does. You're pretty much bound by constraints, I guess, like making sure there's enough coverage on the head, so actually the safety angle is, is covered. Oh yeah, and then the, the safety, the penetration tests, you know, there's a lot that is regulating the helmet to be safe, which also drives a lot of the helmets in the industry to start to look the very same, you know, they look really similar. And so that's kind of, it is important at the end of the day to have these visual philosophies to, to make our helmet look cooler than the other helmets on the market. So we actually backed up and really looked at the emotion of mountain biking. And there was a lot of interaction with Greg Minar during the development process. And we spoke with him, we kind of dug into the emotion. I watched his videos. And at the end of the day, as philosophical as it was, we realized there's a big kind of dualism going on, right? Mountain bikers are very precise. They're really studying where they're gonna be. Um, it's almost surgical, like what's ahead of them. Whereas what's behind them, you know, they're throwing up dirt everywhere. It can look a little messy. It can be a little not orchestrated. So I thought, well, how can we incorporate that emotion into the helmet? And so, you know, as small as it is, maybe something that not everyone might pick up, but we tried to keep those focal points very clear and simple towards the front. Um, almost clinical, whereas towards the rear, we tried to, to break it up into these disintegrating forms and almost synthesize our own language coming into this industry for the first time. So the next step on from Daniel's work, creating the aesthetic of the helmet, lies with Chad, who you are heading up the engineering team. So you literally make the helmet, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we take it from Daniel's sketches and we turn it into a real 3D form. Helmet production at Oakley started relatively recently, I guess, and that was your first taste of making bike, of bike helmets and snow helmets. Yeah, yeah. And so, so what's cool about it is like we've, we've kind of turned the book over, thrown it out, you know, where if, if you're like somebody who's been in the industry for years and years and years, you kind of have your, this is what we do, but we don't have one of those, this is what we do. So we just try, you know, and thankfully, We've got some guys that are pretty okay with it. And so they're like, yeah, just, you know, make cool stuff. And we're like, okay, we'll make cool stuff. You know, we're gonna break stuff. We're gonna fail a bunch, but when we fail, we're gonna learn and we're gonna, we're gonna have better stuff that way. So. Yeah. So, so when we're talking specifics then on this helmet, what, you know, what's been the, the hardest thing for you to sort of, to get right then to realize in, in terms of this? So the toughest thing I would say was um, getting the functionality of these guys correct. Okay. So that we can actually have your eyewear stay on your, on your head. This is totally unique, isn't it, to, yeah. to you guys? Yeah. Like. And so as it being a huge feature, we wanted to make sure like making a feature like this is really easy, but making it work well is really hard. You know, like you can have something that's really clumsy or it's hard to actuate or whatever, and then nobody wants to use it. But like when you have something that works great and you know, everybody just wants to try it, you know you've done your job great. Now, as well as eyewear, the Visual Performance Lab has had to gear up to test helmets as well. And Jana here is gonna give us a little bit of insight into uh, research that was done, not actually in here, but out in the field. So then in the overall kind of R&D process, the overall design process, we've got Daniel doing the aesthetics, and then we had uh, Chad like making sure that the whole thing worked. 
and then your intels go somewhere in the middle to say, well, you know, we need therefore to make sure that it's well ventilated and it's you know lightweight or whatever. Exactly. So. Uh where we're coming from is we're providing information to help them make better decisions. Uh, what we're doing in user experience isn't the final say, but it's great directional information. If you're searching for which way should I go or what's most important to the consumer, I can definitely provide a deck of information that says this is definitely more important than that. Yeah. And here's some ideas of what to look at for best in class. Uh, as we think about benchmarking against which helmet is most important to us. So when we started the project, we were noticing out in the field that the helmets were beginning to interact with the eyewear. And from our perspective, was that the helmet fault or were consumers thinking that was the eyeglass fault? And we couldn't have it be our fault. So it was an opportunity for us to get engaged in the product development and have something to say about how the eyewear and the helmet were interacting together. Okay, and so obviously, at the point where you're out in the field talking to consumers about helmets, you haven't got one yet. So, so you're researching your competitors effectively and finding out exactly what people are liking about their helmets and what they're not liking or perhaps what they're ambivalent about. Absolutely. So uh, one of the advantages to where we work here at Oakley is we've got some of Orange County's best mountain biking right across the street from our office. And we have a, a pool of employees that are avid mountain bikers. Uh, so what we did is we teamed up with 15 of the most ambitious mountain bikers here in the building and we asked them to ride in 12 different helmets that we bought so that we could understand what do they like about the helmets, what do they not like about the helmets, and hopefully in the end we can get to what's missing from these helmets. So for us, looking at those comments and pulling the analytics out of it gave us a, a really sure-footed drive is to say, this is, this is the direction we should be moving in with the helmet. As for the manufacturing itself, well, I can't tell you how fascinating it was, which is a shame because I actually can't show you either. Oakley are understandably guarded about exactly how they do it. From the raw materials entering the facility, through the molding of lenses and frames, right up to the iridium coating. For sunglasses though, it doesn't stop there. They head right back up to the Vision Performance Lab for more testing to ensure that the glasses meet Oakley's stringent standards. So this is Wayne who heads up the Visual Performance Lab, which is kind of like the R&D center of Oakley, is that right? Yeah, this is where we do a lot of our functional testing and performance evaluation, validation, things like that. Cool, and can you show us around? Can we see what's going on in there? Happy to show you. Not many people go back here, so I hope you enjoy. Nice, come on then. So here's a lab. We share this lab with our quality team. Okay. Um, they're always testing products off the manufacturing floor. Um, from our side, the R&D side, we're trying to validate new technologies, innovations, and how that um, really fits within our performance requirements of our products. So, so what, what tests have you got rigged up at the moment then? What have you kind of been, been researching most recently? I guess the, on the new eyewear, you've got what, the advance and nose piece? Yeah, you know, we've been working on that for a while, but we've has, we have a couple tests set up to, to showcase that for you yeah, and cool. how cyclists can really leverage that technology. So. One thing that's really valuable for, for us in R&D and super valuable for a cyclist is this environmental test chamber. Okay. And here I can simulate any condition, any um, humidity level, any temperature, and we learn a lot about products, especially yeah. when it comes to fogging, right? And Advance is really built around anti-fog properties. Okay. Right? At some point, you get hot enough, you're going slow enough, chances are you're going to fog your lens. Yeah. I'm sure you've experienced it, especially experienced in, in the UK. <laughs> right? yeah. And one thing we learned from being out in the field is consumers will solve that problem by sliding the frame down their nose. Yeah. And by doing that, you're just creating airflow. Right? So we took a long look at that consumer behavior and we realized, okay, we can, we can do a better job of that existing solved by you know, what people are doing naturally. Yeah. Right? So this advancer mechanism just pulls the frame off away from your face just far enough to get enough airflow to eliminate that fogging situation. Okay. Right. So what we had to learn is how much to advance this frame. Okay. Right. So he looks he looks like he's been in there for a while. Yeah. That this guy. this test chamber along with this head form, this head form is actually to mimic a sweaty human. Yeah? Right. So that sweats. Yeah. This guy sweats. The <laughs> the chamois on there is to mimic some skin. And the system in here heats up this water enough to to create steam and yeah. fog, right? So we, we got a balance. You made a sweaty head. We made a sweaty that, head. That's amazing <laughs> to, test, yeah. to test your eyewear, fantastic. It's been valuable for eyewear and goggles for sure. Yeah. yeah.
Now we've just popped around the side of the factory to come and check out the legendary Oakley dirt jumps. And I must say, I don't quite know why, despite knowing that I was coming with my crazy dirt jumping skills, they actually have made the jumps themselves off limits. Which is a bit of a shame really, because I was going to show them how it was done, but um, well, I mean, never mind, they've, they've had some half decent riders on here in the past. And you've got to be half decent as well, because look, you've got to jump over a tree straight out of the blocks. Mad skills. Now, as well as the giant dirt jumps that, thank God, I've not been allowed anywhere near, there is a pump track out in the backyard of Foothill Ranch as well. But even more importantly for me is the fact that those hills in the near distance there, that's Whiting Ranch, which are apparently some of the best mountain bike trails in this part of California. And it probably explains why there are so many mountain bikes knocking around the offices just over there. Because most people in there ride those trails during and after work. There can't be all that many brands that have a tank in the car park, but uh, Oakley's certainly one of them. I'll have to make sure I check up with Martin and find out where the order for the uh, GMBM one's gone. Uh, anyway, this does seem like an appropriate point to bring our factory tour to a close. Do make sure you give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to check out some more videos here on GMBN, then why not click on that one on screen now?